thank you guys for watching the videos uh it's been really awesome i really appreciate it seriously and uh, i'm going to do patreon soon i know i keep saying that but i'm working on it and i just got moved into this new place not much just a tiny little room but at least i have a room so here's the uh little mini sketch area a camera on top computer on the side a bunch of shit everywhere and then there's a top down tiny little camera and i sit down there oh there's the table that's the one i'm working on right now that's coming up soon i can't decide if i want to put that on youtube or patreon because i feel like if i put it on youtube it's just going to get demonetized because it's a nude nobody likes nudes apparently so i think it's uh dirty 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 drawing but um so i'll probably put that on uh probably put that on patreon and uh we'll see so um all right on to this morning sketch a little warm-up uh looking at lines grooves furrows and folds so hopefully it helps and let me know if you have any ideas or suggestions or you want to see less of my face next time <laughs> so thanks again for watching and uh, let's get on with it okay so before i get started i want to show you like a little like these little sketchbooks i really really like these and i think this will really help if you just start using them um or making like little study pages like this so just like basic muscles of the face uh nothing crazy you know just like the orbicularis oculi and the orbicularis oris and the the muscles that lift the face the muscles that pull the face down so these are like really good for uh, facial expressions and, and getting kind of a sense of what's going on and then on this one it's just um, a little basic sketch and, and uh, concentrating on the folds in the in the face so like the uh, nasal labial fold you know it kind of follows that Riley rhythm as well and and I make like these little little faces and then like little points around it and then the name so when I'm looking at it I can just cover it with my hand or if it's from a distance I just go oh yeah nine that's that's the vertical uh, glabellar fold and then you go down here it's like okay glabellar fold vertical okay good good so it's like so throughout the day you just kind of run through them like that and you know just throughout like little I look for little triangles areas on the body because that really helps um, find those those indentations and they show up really well in uh, strong uh, lighting that you often find in fine art so I really like those they call fossa or just um, you can just say indentation there's one behind the knee here just a little sketch um, let's see and then like this one is of the skull and there's a superciliary arch and then there's this I don't know it's just I kind of go crazy a little bit, but um, see like these triangles in the neck. So those show up in shadow shapes. So it's it's kind of it's helpful to know them so you can look for them because sometimes they're really subtle um, tonal, like really subtle mid tones, and you can overlook it if you're not aware of the anatomy and and how the body is shaped. So it kind of helps you find find those mid tones. And uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, try making one of these. I'll show you. Um, this will be my first drawing, so I'll just go ahead and kind of recreate this one with uh, Gordon Ramsay. And he has such a great face for uh, looking at lines, grooves, furrows, and folds. So to start off, let's just do. Let me move this out of the way here. Let's see. I got enough light on here. Yeah, pretty much, I think that's about the best I can do. Should I do this in blue or black? Blue or black? I'll do blue and then blue and red. I'll do the writing in red and then the face in blue. So, so starting off, he's. Let's do our circle, <laughs> as always. And he has a very circular looking head, kind of blocky also, but. I'm not going to be too concerned. We're just trying to get like a basic basic shape of him. So I did the cross of the face to find the head tilt. And that's the brow line. 
and then bottom of the nose. It's so liberating to do like these little pin drawings because I can relax a little bit. I'm not trying to make a great piece of work, artwork or something. These are just little studies, little little warm-ups. And uh, they're really good for making uh, little anatomy lessons for yourself. So I'm just basically sketching out his brow ridge and then I'll come up here and find that side plane of the skull. And his pretty round forehead. Let's see. Try and get the shape of his far side cheek here and jawline. I've been watching a lot of Gordon Ramsay on YouTube and the uh, Kitchen Nightmares and I uh, actually took some screenshots from the show because like this guy here this guy here was on the show and he had such a sad look because Gordon Ramsay just totally destroyed his soul and he just looked to totally depleted so I just had to draw it he looked so it was just a beautiful shot I think there were like in this restaurant that was kind of like a church or a renovated church turned into a restaurant and they actually had a, uh, a confessional on the site for I don't know why maybe just I don't know but um, Gordon made him sit in the confessional and uh, tell him how he uh, is fucking up his kitchen and life <laughs> so <laughs> it was terrible to watch but um, entertaining as well We come down here this jaw we're gonna come up on some uh, anatomy here but let's keep focus and just get the big head shape first so you got some folds in the neck I don't even have to do much so let's um I don't have to do much with the shirt or anything I just we're just focused on this face so I'm talking to myself Sometimes I go automatic and I'll start getting to it. Like sometimes I'll even just get hyper focused on one eye and start rendering it. And meanwhile, I don't even know where the nose is placed yet correctly. So I have to like talk myself out. I'm doing a lot of stuff ahead of time. Let's see, I'm looking at the shape of his nose here. I think I kind of blew that, but let's go ahead since we have the basic. Actually, let me finish the eye socket a little bit. So these are the rhythms. You can find it in Loomis, you can find it in the Riley. But we'll take this nasal labial fold rhythm. And then we'll take the mid cheek furrow. They also call them muzzle lines. It's kind of Riley ish. And then on the side as well, that would be Riley and Loomis. And then the brow, or not the brow, but the forehead. And sometimes you can pull the circle down into the corners of the eye socket. And this will be the darkest, darkest area. There's a lot of times, uh, depending on the lighting, but a lot of times the lighting doesn't get up into that socket. And uh, creates this really dark area. Let's place in his lips somewhere right here it's got tiny little lips little shelf and then I'll do the rhythm for the chin I think as I have his face quite wide kind of try to narrow that up a little bit needs to be a little bit wider, huh? I'm going to start working on this cast shadow. So it'll help me kind of get some lightness going. 
which I don't see any. He's got the Cupid's bow, that little V-shape start of the lips. I know it's really tiny on him, but you can see it a little bit. And the corner of the mouth is casting this side kind of angle. And then also from the Riley method, you get this rhythm. Or the head abstractions. There's so many different versions of them online. Um, a f just a few years ago, you couldn't find anything hardly. And now there's all kinds of information, so it's really awesome. When I started trying to learn, there was nothing online. It was terrible. He had to buy these DVDs for like $150 from um, good artists, but man, it's such a lot, it's a lot of money. But now you can get stuff off of YouTube for free. It's pretty awesome. Or Patreon, people have like Patreon, really good people. Let's see, like one of my teachers, Matt Smith from Watts Atelier has a good Patreon. He's a phenomenal artist, so you might wanna go check his out. Let's see, so, oh yeah, so back to the drawing. <laughs> So then I'm just sketching in the nasal labial fold. And for him, it's more of a groove. It's really deep. Um, you can see some over here before it goes in, falls into that shadow, cast shadow of the nose. So the cast shadow of the nose comes down, goes over that philtrum, wraps over the upper lip, then over the bottom lip, and then kind of falls into this shelf of the bottom lip again, comes across then kind of up and over and then there's a core shadow for that jawline and there's a cast shadow on this side for the nose kind of picks up right here and falls down shorten up his chin made it too long then he has um like a little split in the chin called the uh, chin boss uh, right here's the knee the um, mental labial fold and then he has a nice interesting crease like right here but I don't know what I would call that and then right here this is something I'm been hyper focused on lately and I see it everywhere because I've been drawing it on different um, models like or uh, different folks like him is right here you have the uh, the um, uh, mandibular cutaneous ligament and it creates when you get older the skin and fat right here starts to sag past that point and that's where you get what's called jawling right here and he doesn't have too much but some people you can really see it in fact some people they have it pretty much since a, a, at a young age I think it just has to do with the uh, the structure of the uh, the jaw, like, yeah, it's like genetic or something. I'm gonna kind of sketch in his hair a little bit. His hair is wild. The point, it's probably about right here. I was trying to figure out how he did his hair. I don't know if it's like a, a fancy comb over or it's pretty wild. It's like everywhere. And right here it looks like it's almost like that's what makes me think it's a comb over. Cause it has like this swirly thing going on and then it's kind of like sticks out a little bit. <laughs> See, but we're not here to draw hair too much. But I do want to have a little fun here. This is fun. Let's, see, let's go back down here. So many cool things about the face. Uh, let me throw in the cash out real quick. All right, all right. So. Go into the eyes. So you saw I just did like these sunglass shape just to place in the um, where the eyes are going to be. 
and right here you have the uh, the palpebro malar groove and malar means cheek so we have the cheek here and palpebro means something like like uh, gently touching the eye or so we have the eyelid and the cheek so they call it the palpebro malar groove and it can get really deep on people uh, his isn't that deep on this photo but um, I'm gonna go ahead and make it so his <laughs> I can do what I want and over here you have the nasal uh, jugal groove so a lot of times um, you'll see this grooving and um, plastic surgeons love to um, sell it on sell it to people like uh, the the the, uh, the fillers so they don't they'll inject fillers here and here and that'll um, lessen that grooving and also right here what happens is when this starts to hollow out and groove as uh, with age uh, the malar mound right here will start to kind of peak and you'll get this in like almost a triangle right here of hollowing in this area the malar mound will start to catch more uh, mid-tones and it'll just pop off the face and look like a almost like an egg like a little tiny egg shape so like on this side it's catching a little bit more of the light and you can start to see the kind of hollowing of the cheeks and then it catches that mid cheek mid cheek furrow right here so it comes up and around so that's the malar mound and it butts up right against that palpable palpable malar groove and let's see mid cheek furrow let's see what else should i do don't need to do much on the eyes on this sketch here so here we have what i was saying earlier the uh um the vertical glabellar uh, folds and that's because this is the glabellar uh, part of the uh, the nose like it's, it's like a wedge shape that sits right above the nose and then across the forehead they call that the uh, transverse forehead folds and it's like his very almost like trademark <laughs> he has so many folds Kind of come across. You kind of join up with that that shadow. You kind of just that core shadow on the side. So we have mental labial. Also, this is called, um, besides being the mandibular cutaneous ligament, which is actually causing this, it's also, this indentation is also called the uh, pre-jowl sulcus for the same reason, but there's like two different kinds of names. So let's go up here. Did I cover everything on the notes? Oh yeah, then you have the, so that corner of the mouth that's kind of, that shadow shape is really long. On younger people it's uh, usually a little bit smaller. On him it's really wide. Um, you also get this, uh, they call it marionette line. And some people, again, they're like born with it. And you can kind of see it even on like little kids sometimes. But a lot of times it shows up uh, later in um, life with age and such. So maybe I'll just go ahead and put the eyes in. Just kind of finish it off a little bit. Got the upper eyelid. And his eyes are kind of like tucked under his brow. Like, like oh boy, we're in trouble. My kitchen is a mess. He's gonna, he's gonna tear into me. He's gonna tear into me on national TV. And then we have the crease for the lower eyelid. So I really pushed that, um, these lines just for the sake of the, for this little study. Let me kind of 
add in some tone to the uh, shadow side a little bit. So try making like these little sketches in like a notebook or even a piece of scrap paper and kind of carry it around for a while and uh, test your knowledge. I'm going to go ahead and put the names of the different things in, I think, and then um, I'll post that in case you want to use this one as a study guide. Let's see. Put a little indication for the cheek, the zygomatic arch, and then it comes down into the face. The side plan, the temple of the forehead. Let's probably put, he doesn't really have much eyebrows, huh? He's like me, he's a, the eyebrows are really light. He's a brother from the north. Let's see, let's pull this down. Yeah, I wonder if you can grow a, a beard at all. Cause I can't. I tried. It looked awful. A little patchy. Let's see. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead. It's 20. Let me turn this off, and then I'll come right back. Just because the camera is gonna cut off. All right. So he's not on the same head tilt that the picture is, and he's not looking uh, down. His head's not tilted down enough, and looking up at us, but. That's okay. Don't need to kill ourselves. It's our first drawing, come on. It's our little study. He's a perfect, perfect guy to study for this. So I'm gonna pull the red pin out and let's start over here. So one, then we'll put, let's see. Yeah, I'll just put it right here. I think there's like 10, maybe 11. So we got one, would be the palpebro. I know these words are crazy. And you don't have to learn them, I guess, but it really helps me. By knowing the name, and then I remember the thing. I don't know, it's like, if I don't know the name, then I it's easier easier for me to forget the thing and it's kind of the same with people so number two is the nasojugal groove I forgot what jugal is all these names have like they're tr you know translated or um, you can translate them from Latin or Greek let's see I wonder if I wrote it down somewhere. Jugal. Let me look it up on my phone. Okay, so it means jugal comes from Latin as yolk, as an egg. So this is the nasal egg. So it's like an egg shape. That's kind of funny. So maybe this whole, maybe it's referring to this area as being like egg shaped. And this is nasal is of course the nose, so it's like the border between the egg and the nose, the groove between the nose and the and the circle of the eye. That's probably what it is. So then down here we see we got three. That's the mid cheek furrow. Mid. And four. Where's four? Four is. Right here, let's put it, let's put four there. And that'll be our nasal labial fold. And I swear to God, when I first started uh, taking classes at Watts Atelier, um, when I learned the nasal labial fold, <laughs> I saw it in everybody. I couldn't, I could not stop seeing it. And not just that fold, but like, like the whole Riley breakdown of the face I just saw it on everyone it was, it was so it was so crazy I was obsessed with it 
And number five, we're going to put down here for the uh, mental labial fold. That's a really nice one. You see that a lot too. And then number six will be the marionette. I'm reading off my notes, so I'm trying to get make sure I got the spelling right. And I'm trying really hard to write write nice. Let's see Marionette. And number seven, oh my favorite. I'm gonna make it big too. Number seven. Number seven. Mandibular cutaneous ligament. That's that's a one of those cool words that you can say it at a you know around friends you think you sound smart but then they kick your ass for being a, a show off mandibular cutaneous ligament alright and number eight is our jawling Or jowls. It's a weird word. Jowls. And then number nine. I'll stick nine here. Number nine is. Yeah, that's the glabellar fold. I just forgot for a second. So I'm going to call it the vertical. Ah, shit. I forgot the L. There you go. <laughs> this is why I can't teach school like little kids <laughs> I'd be kicked out the first day vertical glabellar fold okay number nine I got no okay I just did number nine what the freak number ten let's just put ten right here number ten is the transverse instead of saying like forehead creases don't say that don't say don't say forehead creases. No, no, say transverse forehead folds. Oh no, no, even better. Transverse forehead furrows. That's better. Sounds awesome. So transverse forehead furrows. I might that's a U. And then finally eleven the beautiful Maller Mound. It's another one I really like. Maller Mound. Maller Mound. Maller means cheek. And then I'll just do 12 because I have it in my notes. 12 I wrote down. So 12, where is it at? So 12 would be like this area right here and this is hollowing that's where you as you get older you start to lose fat and, and, and it sinks in right there and that creates that's what that arrow means it means it, it causes the uh, malar mound to increase so this is like a perfect little study that I would do um, you can add even you know more stuff as you go maybe you can do like the zygomatic arch you know the bone you can do like I don't know what else you can do stuff in the nose like the alar cartilage the wing and the nostril the nares you can even do like lips you can do like the border like the anyway I don't mean to keep going but so this is like like a nice little study and again like a little notebook like this or just on this is on printer paper so you can do that on printer paper and just fold it up and sometimes I do that too I'll just uh, I did that the other day actually I had a well it's not in here but like this one um, I didn't bring it with me but I was just trying out like to draw the knee from memory 
and then some of the bones and structures and muscle and sometimes I'll I'll fold those up and just carry it with me so anyway thanks for watching I hope this helps and uh, uh, give it a try and see uh, see how you like it thank you